What makes a plumber good? Let's go! I'm Kenny Molotov, licensed plumber, professional magician, and entertainer. On this channel, I go through the ins and outs of my career in plumbing. I take you through a day in the life, and we talk tools, theory, and mindset. I'm trying to give you an arsenal of knowledge and an online resource so you can take this trade head on and find yourself successful on the other end. Click subscribe, hit that bell notification, and let's talk pipes. Peeps, Kenny Molotov here at home and I wanted to answer a really important question which is what makes a plumber good? What makes a bad plumber and what makes a good plumber? Now I've been thinking about this throughout my entire career because I've always been trying to get a little bit better every single year. A little bit better, a little bit faster, etc. And I s sort of had to sit down and break it into four different categories. And here are the four categories right off the bat. The one is knowledge, the one is quality, the one is speed, and then we're going to talk aesthetic right at the End. And I'm putting them in that particular order, but it doesn't mean that one is more important than the other. I actually think what makes a plumber good is being able to encompass all of these traits. But let's start off with knowledge. I think knowledge is the fundamental thing that makes a plumber really good. And the reason why I say that is because without knowledge, everything that comes subsequently doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if you're really fast and accurate at the plumbing that you do if you have no idea why you're doing it. Because if you end up making a mistake, usually that's because of the lack of knowledge that you have. That's something you have to keep in mind. So knowledge is the fundamental thing. If you're planning to get into the trade or you're already in the trade, you have to look at this one variable and constantly try to update yourself every year. You got to remind yourself what the rules were, you know, remind yourself what the codes are, remind yourself of the issues you've ran into because of things that you didn't pay attention to. This is a big one for me, especially in the service side of things. Every once in a while, I'll I'll start a job in a way and I'll sit back and I go, you know, I could have ran into a really big issue by starting it this way. Every time I sit in the truck with dad, we're t constantly trying to figure out if there's a more efficient way of starting a job because what you'll notice throughout your career is the more preparation that takes place, the smoother the ride is going to be throughout jobs. There have been jobs that shouldn't have taken so long that I started in the wrong way and all because you start in the, on the wrong side of the fixture, man it can go downhill from there. So knowledge is a really big thing and big variable when it comes to being good at this career. Another thing you have to realize is a lot of knowledge, although you have theoretical, a lot of knowledge is figured out through experience. So in other words, there are a certain amount of mistakes you got to make throughout your career and you got to suck for a certain amount of years before you get good at this job. It's one of those things. Plumbing is a career because it's something you literally hone throughout the rest of your life. Even to this day, I hear my dad say things like, you know what, I'm getting much better at this and this and this. And my dad is in his 60s right now. But that's the sort of career we're dealing with. We're dealing with something that literally, it's kind of like law. You are constantly practicing it. And I, I wish we described plumbing as a practice as well. That is exactly what you're doing. There are some times where you're really rusty because you come back from vacation. And then there are sometimes you're so on point, you're almost impressing yourself and you're going, wow, my knowledge and my skill meet each other somewhere and I'm running through these jobs. I'm already on the third job and it's not even noon yet. You know what I'm saying? So knowledge is a really big thing and I want to give you a pointer there. Knowledge has a lot to do with A, paying attention on the job site, but also B, there's a lot of extracurricular work you're going to have to do. So in other words, when you get into your apprenticeship and you start learning and you start going to school, referencing your notes from school, referencing the codes in your code book is a really big deal. It really is what hones you as a plumber and that's something that you're gonna have to take on and nobody's gonna give it to you in other words you have to do that yourself you have to take the measures to make sure that you remember uh, the different charts and the different sizing and the different venting etc that is up to you and that is something you're gonna have to actively seek and actively keep up to date so once we take knowledge and we put it aside because obviously it's a really big variable we want to start talking about skill and speed okay now skill Skill is something that's going to come throughout time and like I was saying before, you're constantly honing your skills and the reason why that is is because there's constantly new fixtures that you're going to be encountering. Like when it comes to uh, manufacturing, manufacturing doesn't stay the same throughout your time. Toilets 
you'll notice water closets come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Sometimes you have two piece, sometimes you have one piece. I mean, depending on the type of toilet and what year it was made, you might have an entirely different setup in regards to how you're gonna put that down on the flange. So your skill set is also constantly being updated because of new technologies coming into the field as well. There was a point where PEX systems were not in Canada, for example. Dad and I use PEX quite a bit throughout the year, especially with new renovations now. Uh, but PEX for a really long time, there, it, there just wasn't PEX at some point here in Canada. But if you go back 40 or 50 years, plumbers were using galvanized systems, which is a black steel pipe that has a zinc coating on the inside and on the outside and they were doing that at that period of time because copper was being used for a lot of wartime efforts. So they had to switch over to galvanized. It might have been longer to use and to install a galvanized system, but that was something that we don't typically use now. So those plumbers that were using galvanized systems at some point had to reintroduce copper into their lives. And then if they were uh, born in the right uh, time, they might have had to at some point start getting into the PEX side of things, which are three completely different systems so you're constantly learning constantly updating now I want to pay attention to quality here quality is a really big factor when it comes to being a good plumber and the reason why I say that is because it's really frowned upon <laughs> with your customers and also uh, your work and uh, your bosses to have to go back to a place because the quality wasn't high enough. So in other words, when you install a, a water closet, for example, and you don't do the appropriate tests to make sure it's not leaking from underneath and you get called a couple of hours later just to hear, you know, the neighbors down below are experiencing some water in their ceiling. You wanna go back because it just happens to be right above their toilet. It really looks bad upon you and quality is always something that's going to differentiate you from somebody else. Else. That is the product you're essentially selling to the companies that are hiring you. Your quality. Knowledge is what you're selling to the company and your quality is what you're selling to the company because you are representing a company now. Sometimes that company might be just you. Maybe you're just a contractor, a plumbing contractor that works, but that quality is what's gonna get you that call back the next time there's another repair that needs to be done. Or that quality is what is gonna ha get one customer to hand your number off to another customer. You know, word of mouth is a very powerful thing on this planet. My father had gotten all his clientele up into this point all by word of mouth, and we're pretty busy for two guys. So that's just something Thing to be said that quality really goes a really long way with humans you know what I mean when we find out that we found a plumber that's decent in price and also really good at what they do man I mean your phone is going to be flooded with phone calls so quality is another way that a plumber is really good if they if they install fixtures and the fixtures never really run into issues because of how thorough the plumber is the, the plumber sized it correctly and made sure that if he was he or she was running a wet vent they were running the right size for it etc and that the venting system was connected correctly it's a big deal and then the quality of your finishing work I find is becoming a bigger deal as well especially if you're dealing with high-end fixtures that are thousands of dollars a lot of times clients Clients that are buying those fixtures are really particular about image like they really want things to look like they're out of magazines and if you are up to that standard if they look at that water closet and they go man that looks beautiful that looks gorgeous there's silicone under there I can't even see the silicone that's how good the siliconing job is they're gonna call you back and there's a lot of money to be made with higher-end fixtures if you know what I'm saying so quality is definitely another thing you have to pay attention to, and that's something you have to realize. Like I was saying before with knowledge, quality is also something you have to actively be trying to get better at. Because the thing is, is that you don't actually become better at these sorts of things without putting in the effort to get better. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's a workout reference, but there's a uh, mind-muscle connection, where if you really wanna hit that muscle harder, actually you have to pay attention to what that muscle feels. And that's the same way with knowledge and with experience. If you really want to get better at something, you have to really pay attention to what you're doing that's messing it up. So I know in my experience, I really wanted to get better at soldering. Although I can solder, I really wanted to start 
making it neater and making it prettier because a lot of my solder joints kind of look like crap for a big duration of my apprenticeship. And it's something I'm still working on to this day, but I had to really pay attention to how much heat am I putting onto the joint? How much solder am I actually tacking in? Am I cleaning and fluxing everything to the appropriate standard because if you're not, the solder's not gonna go in. And if it doesn't go in, then you tend to overheat and over put because of that. But it took me actively breaking down the process to figure out the mistakes that I was making. So if you have a keen eye for detail and a keen eye for quality, that's gonna make you a really good plumber. So the third thing I wanna talk about, which is important, but I think sometimes people might mix it up, is speed. Here's what I mean by that. There's nothing better than a plumber that's really knowledgeable, really high quality, and has great speed. Now, the speed has to be reasonable, and, and that's what I'm tr sort of trying to say. Remember this, this is the rule that always pops into my head. If the speed is high and the quality is low, you have to go back to that job site. If the speed is low, but the quality is high, you don't have to go back to that job site. And that's where speed falls into the variables for me. That's what I constantly remember. Okay, if I'm spending a little bit more time, but it looks immaculate, there are people that are gonna look at that and go, you know what? It was a bit longer than I expected, but look at it, it's gorgeous. And vice versa, if you finish it in a half an hour and then it starts leaking in an hour's time when you're gone, then all of a sudden people look at you and go, man, I don't know if this person knows what they're doing. They're doing everything haphazardly and you know they don't really care for it. So that's where speed falls on the spectrum for me. I think what you're constantly trying to do is actually make your mind more efficient. And I know that might be a little bit of a weird concept, but what I learned throughout my career and I'm continuing to learn is that the reason why I was going slow was because of an organizational issue. It was because of where I started and where I finished. As soon as I started paying more attention to what are the steps involved to get this vanity in or get that old pipe out and that new pipe in, all of a sudden I started becoming faster and faster and faster because I was approaching the job in a better way. So it wasn't that I was cleaning fittings like a maniac and trying to make sure that everything was glued correctly and I was whipping it around. It was actually that I was sitting down and I was first making sure that I knew exactly what the steps were before I started the job. And that is a really interesting thing that you know you only really sort of learn on the job site that the more organized this is, the smoother and the faster things happen. There was a point in my career where I was trying to get faster where like I just described, I was just trying to do things faster. I was trying to clean faster. I was trying to put putty onto basket strainers faster. Like if you looked at me, it looked like somebody that was rushing, but in reality, I ended up doing slower on those jobs because my speed was going up synthetically. It wasn't going up naturally the way it's supposed to be. So because I sped up synthetically, I wouldn't pay attention to the things that I need to pay attention to to make sure that everything is smooth in other words. So in other words, as my speed went up, the quality went a little bit down. And that's not what you're looking for. You're looking for high quality and you're also looking for efficiency. When these two meet, you're gonna be introduced to to the new variable called speed. And you're gonna be like, welcome, I've been waiting for you for years. Where have you been? So that's just something to keep in mind. That's how I ended up getting faster with a lot of fixtures that I'm pretty fast at right now. And I hope that works in your career. Take a look at it, pay attention to it. Maybe it'll make you faster as well. And the last thing I wanna to talk to you all about is something that, I mean, it's a huge debate and I did a whole video, take a look at it. It's called speed or aesthetic. Aesthetic is the final thing that I think makes a plumber good. I think knowledge makes a plumber good, quality makes a plumber good, speed makes a plumber good, and if you have all those three things, you're already looking amazing to both your client and to the company that you're working with, but aesthetic for me is important. That's something you have to keep in mind. Some plumbers don't really care for it, especially if they're doing things that are gonna be behind walls. Some plumbers are like, look, whether it's uh, beautiful, whether it should be put in a magazine or not, doesn't matter. If you install it correctly, if it's the right engineering and it's installed appropriately, it should work for the next 10, 15 years probably. But I also think it really depends on the type of plumbing you're doing. If you're doing high-end finishing, like I was talking about before, high-end finishing requires aesthetic. The client is actually hiring you for that aesthetic. And if you can make that aesthetic work, that client is 
it's going to call you again, especially if you have all those other variables I was talking about and a decent price, you know what I'm saying? So aesthetic for me, even though some people don't care for it, is a big deal. Now, is aesthetic important enough to prolong that job by two or three hours? I really don't know. That, that might be a little bit extreme. You know, if the aesthetic is getting in the way and making you three or four times more expensive, maybe you're paying a little bit too much attention to aesthetic, but aesthetic is important nonetheless. So I, like, I sorta, <laughs> there's, there's a hashtag on Instagram called Plum Porn, and it's just really beautiful line work with pipes, right? It's people uh, shining their pipes, soldering them gorgeously, and then you just look at these pictures of Man, the perfect lines. Everything is done with laser precision with this sort of stuff. And that for me is like gorgeous. And I look at that every day I go onto Instagram. And that's something you have to keep in mind. What you have to remember now is that there are plumbers out there doing that. That is your competition. That's the standard that some people are making now. So for me, whenever I see that, there's a little bit of discouragement and a little bit of like, look, that's where it's headed. Let's go, man. Let's get better at this sort of stuff. Especially with PEX work. I, I have this plumber that I follow. His PEX is straighter than my copper sometimes, man. I don't know how he unbends the pecs to make it look so straight, but it looks gorgeous. So I do think it's a variable you have to pay attention to because I do think the clients and I do think your, your bosses and your managers and your foremen are paying attention to it because if a customer calls your company and they say, look, it looks like crap. I mean, it works, but it looks like somebody with dirty hands siliconed everything. You know, it's not gonna really look good for you. It's not really gonna look good for your plumbing company that you're working for. So aesthetic is a variable that you have to pay attention to, especially when you're doing the finishing stages of plumbing. I mean, that's the final fixture that's gonna go in. When you're dealing with the earlier stages of plumbing, I typically still pay attention to it. I do shine some pipes. I do make sure that if I'm using ABS and ABS glue, that the glue isn't getting on the cabinetry, which means I'm putting down cloths. And I'm also wiping the joints with ABS glue. That's something that I typically do because it looks neater. Instead of having the ABS glue runs on the pipe, it looks prettier and pretty, uh, you know, pretty pays. Pretty pays some good dollar for a lot of people. So peeps, I hope you liked this video. I think those are the four major things that makes a plumber good. If you have great knowledge, great quality, great speed, and you have great aesthetic, I think you are a powerhouse. I think you're a juggernaut. I think you can go into any plumbing company and say, look at my previous work. I need work, you know, I, I need to have a job. And they'll be like, let's go. Get in the truck, man. I if you called me 20 minutes earlier, it would have been ready for you. I think that's what you're constantly trying to do. Your work is your resume for a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Your knowledge, your quality, your speed, your aesthetic is everything you can sell to a company and you can sell to a client. And those are the four variables people call you for that I find in my career. So pay attention to those things. Actively try to get better every single year. You don't have to get better exponentially. You have to just get better a little bit and that will compound eventually. And before you know it, you're gonna be so much better. You'll look back at your younger self and go, wow, I can't believe I got here, but I'm here. You know, and that's the game plan. That's what you're trying to do. So peeps, I hope you liked this video. Let me know down in the comments below if there are any other variables you think that make a plumber good. And I'll see you plumbers very soon. Kenny Molotov, guys. Peace, baby. I'll give you my tomorrow.